All right, so as promised, this video is going to be all about U substitution practice. So as we talked about, U substitution is a highly nuanced concept. So it's really important that we do as much practice as we can to really make sure we are well equipped to deal with whatever problems we see out there. So before we go ahead and get started, as always, to just some advice on how to best use this video. So try each problem on your own. That's really important because like we like I've mentioned before, um, you don't get you don't do well in math by just watching me solve. It's the active learning part that really will help you go the extra mile. Check the solution. Make sure you're doing it right. Uh, then watch the explanation to make sure you've understood each aspect. So I've broken these problems down into several different sort of um, categories. So you'll see a different kind of theme associated with each example. Make sure you've understood. Make sure you've understood that theme, and make sure you've understood the overall ideas of U substitution with each problem, and that'll help you do well in the long run. Uh, and of course, there's a table of contents. So I do recommend you try each problem on your own, anyways. Like look through all the problems in this video. But if you do want to navigate to a few specific ones later on, or maybe just during this first watch here, uh, you're welcome to do so with that. Um, also, I used an extra worksheet that I found online for some, for some inspiration to help me make sure I had a, a good variety of problems to show you guys. So that worksheet is in the description. It's a fantastic worksheet, a lot of great problems on there. Um, some are also a little bit more challenging than what I've covered in this video. So if you want to try those out, uh, feel free to do so. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with some new substitution practice problems. Okay, so just to get ourselves sort of eased into this video, we're going to start with a few uh, baseline examples. So these are very similar to what we saw in the lecture video. So I'm going to give you a second for this first one here to figure out what substitution you might choose for u that would make this integral doable. So I hope you found u equals 4x minus 1. It's a pretty nice substitution, pretty simple. And now we can just go ahead and find du. du, again, we're taking the derivative of both sides. So we have 4 dx. And then dx, we solve for dx, we get dx equals du over 4. Nice. And now we can just plug all this into our integral again. So we have the integral of sine, not of 4x minus 1 anymore, but sine of u. And we have du over 4. And that is a much nicer integral to find. Right? So the an antiderivative of sine, as we've talked about, is going to be negative cosine. right? So what we're going to have here is if we pull this 1 fourth up front, we will be left with, this will become 1 fourth negative cosine of u plus c. And that's basically all the integration we need to do for this problem. Now the last step we need to do is just plug back in for u, because remember we started with x, we also have to end with x. So we're going to plug this guy back in for u, and that'll be our final answer here. So we have 1 fourth, we can actually bring that negative sign up here. So negative 1 fourth cosine of 4x minus 1 plus c, and that right there will be our final answer. So I highly recommend, like we've done before, Check this answer for yourself. Take the derivative of this expression and make sure you're getting what's in the what's uh, under the integral sign here, right? So make sure you do that. Uh, we're not going to actually do this out by hand as we did in the previous practice problems video, but uh, I do want to make sure you spend the time to actually take this out and make sure that it's the same thing as that. This one is not too hard, so you can it should be pretty quick. Okay. All right, next example here. So we have the cube root of 10x minus 4. So once again, I'll give you a second. Tell me what you would choose for u. So once again, I hope you got u equals 10x minus 4. Pretty nice substitution there. So we can go du is equal to 10dx. And then we can solve for dx. So dx is just going to be du over 10. And we can plug this back into the integral here. And so what we're going to get is um, we have the cube root of just u. And we have du over 10. So the remember, cube root is the same thing as u to the 1 third. So this is just really a nice uh, inverse power rule problem here. So if we think of 1 as 3 thirds, we're going to add 1. So what we're going to get here is just going to be 
we'll have this one tenth that comes from here. Um, and we're going to have three fourths u to the four thirds plus c. Right? And now for our last step, we're just going to plug back in for u. So u is equal to 10x minus 4, so we're going to plug that back in. Uh, we can also take one extra simplifying step of multiplying these two fractions here. So this is going to be 3 over 40 times 10x minus 4 to the 4 thirds plus c. All right, so now let's move into some slightly more complex examples and see if we can stretch our skills a little bit more. So for this guy right here, once again, take a second, see if you can figure out what the best choice for you uh, would be. So congratulations if you saw it, um, u equals ln of x, because that is the right answer. So congratulations if you saw it. If not, we can see we can see why that's good here. Now you might you could have done this using just following that general rule we talked about, which is like you know look for the innermost function. That's an idea, but let's see exactly why this substitution works so well. So if we take du, right, we get um, 1 over x dx. And then now when we solve for dx, we actually get x du, right? So now what happens when we put this back into our integral, we get something like this. So we get, um, we can factor out the 7 halves just to make things a little cleaner. So we have secant squared um, we have secant squared, let's do that in blue. So we have secant squared u times x du. Right? And now we have an x here in the numerator to cancel out this x in the denominator. And so that's why this ln of x substitution works so well, because it puts that x there in the numerator here for us to cancel with that whatever's in the denominator. So now what are we left with here? Well, it's just going to be a secant squared of u. And if we remember, the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared. So the antiderivative of secant squared is just going to be, maybe we can come back up here, is just going to be um, 7 halves, carrying forward that, that coefficient there, 7 halves tangent of x, or, or tangent of u, rather, plus c. And now, just plug back in for x, um, plug, excuse me, plug back in for u, so we get 7 halves tangent of ln of x plus c, and that right there is our final answer. So you can also check this by yourself. Take that derivative. We're not going to do it. Um, out, uh, we're not going to do it in, in this video. But if you take that derivative, it's actually not too hard. You will get what's under the integral here. So I highly recommend you practice doing that check. Okay. So next question. We're going to look at this guy over here. So once again, I'll give you a quick second. See if you can figure out what uh, u should be. All right, so now this one again, it, there's no sort of like inner function for us to follow like we did here, right? So for example, in the last few examples, so there's usually a very clearly defined inner function. We don't really have anything like that here. We just have a, two different polynomials. And so it might look a little bit weird because we can't really factor anything. We can't cancel anything out. But there is one very creative substitution that we can do, and that is u equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1. Right? So if we do this, and now we take our du, we get 3x squared minus 4. And you might actually see where we're going with this. Because now when we solve for dx, we get over du over squared minus 4. And this 3x squared minus 4 is exactly what we have in the numerator. So it actually cancels out very nicely. So we can actually see that out by just writing this all out here. So we have integral 3x squared minus 4, dividing that by, well, first we have a u here, and then we have du over 3x squared 
minus 4. So we get this really nice cancellation where both these things just go away. And so all we're left with is just the integral of 1 over u du, which if you think if we think back to our identities, is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Plug back in for x, and so we're just going to get ln of uh, x cubed minus 4x plus 1 plus c, and that right there would be your final answer for this problem. So the theme of these two problems here is just to really sort of visualize how this, this process of solving for du and dx sort of helps you make these cancellations. Because in both these cases, the substitution itself might not directly look like it does much. But when you actually solve for dx, you can kind of see you get some really nice cancellations. So if you're able to go through this thought process uh, in advance, it's very helpful because it can not only help you find the correct solution fast, it can help you whittle away a lot of incorrect solutions as well. So for example, if you if you thought you might want to make u 3x squared minus 4, you could very quickly see that that would not actually cancel anything out if you if you did the steps through. So this is a very important skill, and that's kind of the theme of these two examples here. All right, one more example here. So once again, I'd like you to take a second and, and think about what might be a good choice for you here. And uh, we'll, I'll give you a second to think about that. And I hope you found u equals inverse tangent of x. If you did, that's great. If not, totally fine. This will this will give you a good idea of why that's a good substitution. Well, on one hand, it's really the, one of the better ones that you might, might might think of, as opposed to 1 plus x squared, which doesn't really cancel anything. And u equals x never really does much. Um, but let's see why this is such a really good substitution. So du, now if we do that, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, because remember, that's the derivative of, our, of inverse tangent. Um, and then we solve for dx, we actually get 1 plus x squared times du. We're just pushing that over to that side. And then what we can do now, once we plug this back into the integral, so that's, we come back over here, we get the integral of, we have this 1 plus x squared and the denominator. Now we have, oops, we have u times 1 plus x squared du. So now what happens is this and this will cancel. You might have seen that even right at this step right here, but these two will now cancel. And so what we're left with at the, with this stage is just the integral of u du, which is a super nice integral to solve. It's really, really friendly. And so this one will just simply evaluate to u squared over two plus c, right? And if we plug back in for, for u here, this is gonna come out to, um, inverse tangent of x the whole quantity squared over 2 plus c and that guy right there would be your your final answer right so again the the under, underlying idea here i want you to see is that noticing that this this is what comes about that when you take when you have r you set u equals r tangent going through that step and saying all right we get one over one plus x dx and then that leads to this kind of cancellation being able to see that is very very helpful because like we just talked about it not only helps you find what the right substitution might be but it also helps you eliminate uh, some incorrect ones so for example in this case choosing u equals one plus x squared would not be great because well, there's nothing that would really cancel with that 2x that comes out of that. So being able to do this, especially if you're able to slowly over time do this sort of thing in your head before you actually start solving the question, well, that'll really go a long way for you because that kind of, it'll help you um, work through these things a lot faster. Right? So that's it for this example. All right, let's move on to our next set of examples here. So let's look at this first one here. Uh, what, as always, Take a quick second, tell me what you think would be a good choice for you. And congratulations to you if you found the substitution u equals x to the fifth minus nine. So this is a pretty uh, logical one if you think through the inner function thing that we talked about in the lecture video. So it is the inner function here. But let's also look at, this also sheds light into another pattern I want you guys to be aware of. So let's take a look. So if we go, if we take du, now this is going to be 
um, you're just going to have 5x to the fourth here because the 9 goes away, uh, dx. Then we divide, then we solve, so we get dx equals du over 5x to the fourth. So we put this back into the integral. This will give us, well, we have this x to the fourth here. Then we have really just u to the 18th power, because right? all of this is now u. Uh, and then we have du over 5x to the fourth, right? So now, all of a sudden, this x to the fourth and that x to the fourth will cancel out. And that really nicely just leaves us, if we move this one-fifth up front, up front, with just the integral of u to the 18th du, which is just an inverse power rule problem. So if we maybe come back up here, now this is all this is going to be is just going to be, well, so we have 1 over 5. This is just going to be 1 over 19 u to the 19th plus c, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And now we can just plug back in for x. So we just, and we can also take a chance to multiply these fractions out. So this is just going to be, uh, let's see, 1 over 95 times x to the fifth minus 9 to the 19th plus c. And that would be your final answer. Cool. All right, let's look at the next example. So once again, over here, take a quick second. Tell me what would be the best choice for you. And I hope you saw it. You might have gotten this after we're looking at this one, but the, uh, the right answer is u equals x squared. Right? So we're targeting this x squared over here uh, that's in the exponent there. So if we do that, we get du equals 2x dx. And of course, dx is equal to du over 2x. Plug that back into the integral, and we get x e to the u, and we have du over 2x. Once again, we can move the 1 half up front, but more interestingly, this x and that x cancel, so we're just left with 1 half times the integral of e to the u du. And if we remember, the nice thing about e to the u is the, uh, about e to the x in general is that it's, it's its own derivative, it's its own antiderivative. So this is right here is just going to be 1 half e to the u plus c. Plug back in for x, we have 1 half e to the x squared plus c. And this leads us to a, another interesting pattern here. So you notice in both of these cases, we have some function in here with an x to the something power here. And in front of it, we're multiplying it by x to one power lower. So here we have x to the fifth. We're doing something to x to the fifth with some function here, in this case, x to the 18th. And we have an x to the fourth in front of that. Over here, we're taking e to the x squared. Again, we're doing something to x squared. And we're multiplying this by x. So that's another pattern here that you should be aware of. And that is whenever you see something like this, you always want to make this, this guy right here your substitution, this, this higher power here. So in this case, that would be x to the fifth. Uh, in this case, x squared. Of course, in this case, it's this entire thing. But that's basically what you want to make your substitution. And the reason for that is because once you do this, take this derivative here to solve for dx, you actually will, the power rule guarantees you that your, your, your new exponent here that you're going to cancel is going to be one less than, is going to, you're going to drop one off the exponent. So you get a very nice cancellation here, as we can see. In both these cases, we, we substituted u equals x to the fifth. In this case, we got a nice x to the fourth cancellation here. We said x squared here, we got a nice cancellation with the x here. So that's another pattern to pay attention for. And what's really actually interesting about this problem in particular is that e to the x squared by itself, like this integral by itself actually cannot be integrated using anything you will learn immediately. Like in fact, you won't really even know how to, you, you, need, you need something beyond what we call elementary functions. And uh, you don't even really talk about that unless you study math or physics in college. So you can't even, we can't even actually integrate this. But if we tag on an x there, which actually, which you'd think makes the function more complicating, 
suddenly you're able to do it because of this nice little trick here. So that's something to keep in mind there. All right, let's try a few more examples on that same pattern. So first we have x to the seventh times the cosecant squared of 4x to the eighth dx. Take a second, figure out what the best value for you would be. And in this case, I hope you found it, it's going to be u equals 4x to the eighth. Just like we talked about, so we have x to the seventh times cosecant squared of 4x to the eighth. So we have x to the seventh, and we're multiplying it by, and we're doing something to x to the eighth, and we're multiplying it by x to the seventh. So that's again, that should spring this pattern into mind, the, this whole thing here. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take du, it gives us 32 x to the seventh, dx, dx, that comes out to, um, if we divide both sides, we get du over 32x to the seventh. Plug that into this integral. Well, already you can see we have this nice x to the seventh, the denominator here, that's going to that's gonna cancel with this x to the seventh up here. So we can already see that, but let's all the same go through the steps. So if we do this, we're going to get, uh, we have x to the seventh, uh, cosecant, oops, cosecant squared of, well, just u, and we have du over 32 x to the seventh. Listen, this cancel, so we're just left with the integral of cosecant squared of u, uh, of course, with multiplying by 1 over 32. Um, this guy right here is just going to be negative tangent, right? So if we come on over here, excuse me, negative cotangent. Right, so we have uh, 1 over 32 times negative cotangent of u plus c. And if we plug back in for x, we can move this negative sign up front here. So we have negative 1 over 32 cotangent of x to the 4x to the 8th plus c. And that right there will be your final answer. Awesome. So let's go into the next one now. So once again, see if you can apply our pattern here and choose the best choice for you. In this case, you, I hope you got this right, it's going to be 3x squared minus 5. And once again, the idea, just like we saw over here, we have we're doing something to x squared, taking a square root and stuff here, and we have this 9x up here. So we're basically just going to be multiplying, we're just going to be using our pattern here. When we have, Whenever we see an n plus 1 power and an n power here, we're just going to be uh, using our pattern. So d we're just going to pick this guy to be u. So du, again, it's going to be 6x dx, dx, du over 6x. And you can already see again, just like we saw here, we have a very nice cancellation coming up. So put this all together. We have integral 9x square root of just u du over 6x. So this x and this x will cancel. Actually, the 9 and the 6 will just become 3 halves. So what we're left with is actually quite nice. It's just going to be 3 halves. Uh, times the integral of this guy over here. And the antiderivative of u to the one half, of u of the square root of u, which is u to the one half, is actually just going to be um, two thirds u to the three halves. Just using our inverse power rule there, plus c. What's really nice is that this two thirds and this three halves actually just cancel out. So we can actually just cancel those before we even plug in for, for u now. And so what we'll end up with, maybe let's. Yeah, we can, we can squeeze it in here. So that's going to give us, well, these two are going to cancel, so we're, we're just going to be left with um, 3x squared minus 5 to the 3 halves plus c. And that right there will be our final answer. So I hope you're seeing again how this pattern is useful, right? So it does kind of apply our whole, the, what we talked about before with the previous pattern, which is recognizing how this dx and the substitution can move around but it's a it's just a useful one to keep in the back of your mind right so you can go through these pretty quickly if you ever see something like this um, but yeah and of course don't forget try to check these check make sure make sure you check your answers for these uh, these are 
not too hard to check, so you should be able to get exactly what's under the integral sign here. Uh, make sure you do that before we before going forward. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next examples. All right, one more example here. Now, for this one, again, I'd just like you to take a second, see if we can figure out what a good substitution would be for us to use here. Hopefully you saw u equals 1 minus x to the fourth. So again, we're just following the same pattern we've been doing so far. You might have been tempted to say a good substitution would be u equals x to the fourth. That could work, but then you would have a 1 over u here, and then a 1 minus u instead of just a u here, so the algebra would not work out as nicely, and you'd probably have to do another substitution anyways. So this guy right here is the best substitution available. And then we go the same, du is equal to negative 4x cubed dx. And of course, dx will be du over negative 4x cubed. Wonderful. So now we just plug this all in, and you can already kind of see where this is going here. So we have x cubed over, we have u. Uh, we can move the negative 1 fourth up front. So we have negative 1 fourth up here, uh, du over x cubed. Whoops, oh, it's a little bit messy there. All right, so du over x cubed. That and that will cancel, so we're just left with the integral of 1 over u x cubed, which of course we know is just going to be the natural log of u. So we have negative 1 fourth ln of u plus c. And now all you have to do is plug back in. Right? So now we just substitute back in for x, and so our final answer is going to be negative 1 fourth ln of absolute value of 1 minus x to the fourth plus c, that's, and that's it. That's your final answer for this problem. All right, so we're gonna start our final sort of pattern of um, use substitution problems that you might see. So in this particular example, we have 12x times the square root of four, my, of square root of four minus, four x minus 10 dx. So see if you can figure out what a good substitution for u might be here. So again, what's fundamentally frustrating about this particular um, this particular expression here is that we can't really simplify anything nicely, right? Because this 12x is sort of stuck outside, and this 4x minus 10 doesn't can't really simplify any further because of the square root. We can't we can't foil, we can't really distribute. So that's a little bit frustrating there. So to clean that up, what we're going to do is we're just going to set u equals to everything under the square root here. So we're going to set u equal to 4x minus 10. Yeah. And then we can just carry on from there. So we have du, it's actually gonna be very nice, just four dx, make a better four, yeah. And then we can just solve for dx, it's gonna be du by four. And then we can just plug all this back into that integral there. So have, um, we'll have 12 x. And you might start to see there's a tiny bit of a problem here. So we have, basically we have u d over four. So you might have, if you didn't see it before, you might have seen it now, you might see it now, but this x over here does not actually cancel with anything, right? Because when we, our substitution for d for dx uh, does not have an x in it here, so we cannot really clean, we, can, we can't really cancel that x out with anything. So that's a problem, right? Because if we want to do u substitution, we want to integrate this through, this in this step we should not have any more x's in our equation so are we done well not quite there's one last little trick we can pull out of our we can pull up out of our sleeves and that is we're going to take a look at this first equation that we made up here right this equation for u we're going to come over here and say all right so if u is equal to 4x minus 10 let's make x u plus 10 over 4. All right so all we're doing is just solving this equation for u we're taking this equation for u and we're now we're solving it for x. And now all of a sudden, we have a nice substitution for x that's in terms of u. And if we just plug this guy in over here for this x over here, then we have an, we have an integral that's entirely in terms of u, works out pretty cleanly. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna take this integral here. So now we have 12 times this entire red thing here, so we have u plus 10 over 4. 
um, then we have square root of u du over 4. Awesome. So first thing, let's let's just go ahead and bring all our constants out, right? So where do we have a 1 over 4 here, a 1 over 4 here, and a 12 over there? So if we bring all that out, we'll, um, we'll end up with uh, 12 over 16, u plus 10 square root of u du. And this is a much, much nicer integral than what we had here, right? If this is something that we actually saw something similar to in our uh, basic anti-differentiation video, where we can just basically go ahead and just foil the square root of u to each of these terms, and we get a nice just polynomial equation effectively that we can uh, just do inverse power rule on. So if we get down here, we get 12 over 16. If we distribute that out, we get the integral of um, u to the 3 halves plus 10u to the 1 half du, applying inverse inverse power rule. And we can also simplify this 12 sixteenths, by the way. If we divide by 4, we get that this is just 3 fourths. So we have 3 fourths. This is just going to be, um, you know, adding 1 here. That gives us um, 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus adding 1 there, we get 2 thirds. Excuse me, no, that would be... Yeah, that would be two-thirds. Sorry about that. <laughs> two-thirds u to the three-halves plus c. It doesn't matter if you put the c in here or out of there or up there. And now for our final step, we're just going to plug back in for x. Uh, just plug back in x. Or plug back in x. Um, and we could distribute this three-fourths at the same time as well. So this first guy here is going to be uh, 6 over 20, and we'll do this up here because we're running out of room. So it's going to be 6 over 20, um, 4x minus 10, 5 halves, plus uh, 3 fourths times 2 thirds. Well, the 2 and the, so actually this 3 and this 3 cancel, this 2 and that 2 cancel, that 4 cancel, so we're actually just going to be a half right there. So we'll have 1 half. Um, 4x minus 10 to the 3 halves plus c. And this right here would be our uh, final answer. So this was pretty involved, but uh, effectively the, the key theme, uh, the key idea of this theme is being able to look at the substitution and just realize that, well, I can actually solve this one for x and I can plug this back in. So this would typically only work in cases where you have a linear substitution for u because when you start to get to quadratic, when you start to get to things with other exponents, then you start to, um, you get very weird things for du, so it doesn't quite work out as cleanly. But when you have a, lin when you have a linear equation for u, be on the lookout for this kind of pattern here. So think about um, how you can plug in for x and solve from there. So as for this example, let's look at a couple more in this theme. All right, so once again, look at this example. It's following the same theme as the previous one, but let's see if we can figure out what a good substitution for u uh, might be. So congratulations if you were able to find u equals x minus 9. It might have been tempting to make u equals x minus 9 to the fifth, because remember, we because that would be the everything under the square root here kind of like what we did in the previous example, but when you actually take du here, then this gets a little bit messy because then you have 5x minus 9 to the fourth, and then this does not quite uh, work as nicely with cancellations as we, we might hope. So this is not quite right. We just take the x minus 9 piece. It'll work out just fine, as we'll, we'll see. So then du in this case becomes, again, just dx, like we saw last time, linear function. We just get a constant. And now we can come back in here and do our substitution. So we'll see here again, we have the integral of, well, x plus one, that's not changed. And then we have the square root of u to the fifth, yeah, and we have du, right? And once again, we run into that same issue that this x here does not cancel, right? So. Once again, like we saw in the previous example, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to come back up here to this equation for u, and we're going to say, all right, so if u equals x minus 9, let's maybe come down here for that, then x 
equals u plus 9. And if, if we wanted to actually even solve for x plus 1, that might be slightly easier to do in this situation, so we can make a direct substitution instead of doing one extra step of algebra here. We can say x plus 1, adding 1 to both sides, is going to equal u plus 10. Right? So we're just going to plug this guy in for, for x here. Uh, we're going to plug this substitution in here, and then we can go, we have, like we discussed, we'll have an integral that's solely in terms of u that we can work with moving forward. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go, so again, we've, we've substituted for x plus 1. You don't have to, you could still plug in x plus u plus 9 here, and then you'd still get the same thing. I just wanted to do the algebra step here instead of over there. So we'll have u plus 10 times, we can rewrite this as u to the 5 halves, right? Because square root is the same thing as to the 1 half power, du, right? And now we can just, once again, just like we saw in the previous example, this becomes something very nice that we can just foil through and uh, turn into a quadratic, uh, or into a sort of polynomial equation that we can then use inverse power rule on. So if we do this, we're going to get um, 5 halves plus 1 is going to be u to the uh, 7 halves plus 10 um, u to the 5 halves du. And now we can just come over here and do our inverse power rule. So for this first piece right here, we're going to have, um, if we add 1 to that, we'll have 2 ninths u to the 9 halves plus, let's see, don't, we shouldn't forget the 10. So we have, um, what's that? It's going to be uh, 20 over 7 times u to the, seven halves hmm, plus c and that right there is our integral in terms of u all we have to do now is just plug back in for x so we'll, we're going to get two ninths x minus nine to the nine halves plus 20 over seven x minus nine to the seven halves plus c and this right here is going to be your final answer. Once again, I would encourage you to try and check this answer with, uh, try and actually check this answer by taking a derivative. This one might be a little bit messy to simplify to get back to exactly this, but even if you're kind of able to get back to sort of what we have over here, or like somewhere over here, uh, you should be okay. But um, at least get in the practice of trying to check these answers wherever you can. Awesome, so that's it for this example. All right, last example in this particular theme here. So let's take a second, look at this uh, Look at this integral here. See if we can figure out a good substitution for u. Well, congratulations if you were able to spot u equals 3x minus 4. And again, this works well because what's really crippling us here in this particular integral is that we can't simplify anything very nicely because of this denominator here, right? Because if this were flipped, for example, we could split it up into two different fractions, do a lot of things. But because it's in the denominator, we can't really simplify down anything further. Nothing really cancels or anything like that. So anyways, that's why we make this our substitution. Once again, we'll have du is 3dx. So dx is going to be du over 3. Plug all this in. So we're going to end up with integral of 10x over have u du over 3, right? And then once again, we can go ahead, uh, we see that this x doesn't cancel, but we are not worried. So we can just come back over here to this expression here uh, and just say, well, x is now going to be u plus 4 over 3. And now we can plug this guy back in for x. And so what we're going to end up with is and at this point, I'm actually going to just factor out this 10 and this 1 third. So we're going to have 10 thirds up front. Um, integral of, let's do that in red. We'll have u plus 4 over 3 over u. Oh, let me just keep that in. Over u uh, du. 
we can maybe simplify this just a little bit more. Let's take, we'll just make one more small adjustment step. So we're gonna take this one third and bring it up front and that should look a lot nicer. So we're gonna have 10 over nine integral of u plus four over u du. So this is not a strictly necessary step, but I find it helps me, uh, you know, helps this integral look nicer for me, which, which is really nice and helps me solve with greater accuracy. But yeah, anyway, so now this is, again, is an integral like we saw in our uh, basic anti-differentiation practice, where we can basically now just split this fraction up into two separate fractions, and and we can um, we can solve from there. So if we split this up, we'll have 10 over 9. So we're just going to split this up into two things. So we'll have u over u plus 4 over u. Yeah. u over u, of course, these just cancel, give us 1. This does not cancel any further. So when we take this integral, what we're going to end up with is we'll have 10 over 9, just u, plus 4 times the natural log of u. Cool. And now all we have to do is just plug back in for x. And so what we're going to get then is we're going to have 10 over 9. Um, maybe we can distribute the 10 9s. You don't have to, but we can do that. Um, 10 over 9s, we have 3x minus 4 plus 40 over 9 ln of 3x minus 4 plus c. And that right there would be our final answer. All right, final example in this video. Congrats on making it this far. Let's finish with a bit of a bang. So this one is a little different from what we've talked about so far. We're integrating secant of x times tangent of x. This might seem familiar to you, right? Because you might remember this as being the derivative of, of a secant of x, right? But all the same, let's, I want to show you how we can actually derive this using u substitution. So before we actually do any u substitution, it helps to rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines, just like we did when we were integrating tangent. Right, so we can rewrite this as, well, secant is 1 over cosine, right? Tangent is sine over cosine. Right? And then we can put these together, and we'll get integral of sine of x over cosine squared of x. Awesome. So now we have something in terms of sines and cosines, and now we can actually go ahead and do a u substitution. So this point, once again, for the last time in this video, I'm going to ask you to take a second and see if you can figure out what a good substitution will be. Well, this one's a little bit tricky, but actually it's going to be u is equal to cosine of x. Not cosine squared of x, but cosine of x. So congrats if you were able to find that. It's not always, it's not readily obvious. But now this actually works out very nicely because now we can take du, it's going to be negative sine of x dx, and we can solve for dx being du over negative sine of x. Plug it all in. We come back over here for that. So for the integral, we have sine of x up here, and we'll have um, u squared because right, that's cosine of square, cosine of x squared, um, we have du over negative sine of x, right? That sign, that sign cancelled, so all we're, all we're left with is negative 1 over u squared. That's just going to be an inverse power rule, right? Because it's the same thing as u to the minus 2. So then we can just do that out, and so what we're going to end up with is we'll have this negative up here. So we'll have, um, so we have negative u to the minus 1, plus c, factor of the negative sign. This negative and that negative will cancel. So all we're going to be left with is actually going to be 1 over u or u to the negative 1 plus c. And if we plug back in for u, remember that u is equal to cosine of x. So we'll end up with 1 over cosine of x plus c, which is equal to secant of x plus c which is exactly 
what we predicted it to be. Maybe we should have added the plus C over here. But as you can see, we were able to derive using a U substitution what the what this antiderivative was. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. It is the longest one I've ever filmed for this channel, but I think it is really important that you are able to see as many U substitution examples as you can and actually do as many of these out as you as you can because U substitution is very fundamental to a lot of the other stuff we'll do in integral calculus. So I do hope you have this down and I hope this video was helpful. And I will see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time!